Hello, it is Saturday, October 16th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword, Daily Solve. It's the Saturday puzzle today, possibly the most difficult puzzle of the week, at least that's how it is framed and is often the case. Before the solve and before reviewing some clues from yesterday, I wanted to read a comment left on yesterday's puzzle unrelated to a specific clue from ADYJ1411. And I apologize if there's a, a quicker way to pronounce that. But this commenter says, Hi, I've been doing crosswords with my friends for around a month now. I'd like to hear your thoughts on crosswords that may have a lot more proper nouns than usual. I know that crosswords are not supposed to have two pieces of obscure knowledge, and this one wasn't terribly bad. But I've noticed some puzzles that are overwhelmingly actors that may be supposed to be common knowledge, but that I would have no chance of getting. Do you know of any way of going through such crosswords? Well, uh, (laughs) I think anyone who's been watching this series for a while knows that I certainly have some pretty big blind spots. I would say most significantly sports and anything relating to the people who play them and probably current pop music artists. I would say those are probably my biggest blind spots in the New York Times crossword. I mean, outside of simply arbitrary knowledge that's incredibly obscure, when it comes to specific categories of things, I do struggle with those. And current actors to some degree as well, maybe less so than those other categories, but that I can relate to to some extent as well. But I would say if you've only been solving crosswords for a month, you're probably, uh, you're probably going to end up doing fine in this regard, I would think, because my, certainly for myself, I tend to work around this with brute force. I tend to get a lot of crosses. And then, especially with names, you can often infer things about names. I mean, maybe not to quite the same degree of predictability as uh, common words, but names tend to follow rules, even even though names can be of many different linguistic origins, they they still tend to work in some ways the way that other words do. And you can you can get them with crosses frequently. So that's maybe an unsatisfying answer, but uh, I think the the two big things that the crossword relies on in its solvers are general knowledge and uh, vocabulary and some degree of cultural literacy. And I don't think everyone who solves the New York Times crossword puzzle has all of those things in equal measure, but I do think the New York Times crossword is a pretty good blend of the three in such a way that once you get fluent enough at solving the crossword generally, you can make up for your lack in one of those areas simply by Uh, filling in enough of the puzzle that you can get crosses for the rest. I wasn't actually able to find any specific evidence of the notion that a puzzle shouldn't have more than two pieces of obscure knowledge. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to know if that's something you saw stated somewhere by Will Shorts, the editor of the the crossword. But I, I, in searching for it, I wasn't able to find anything, which doesn't mean it's not a rule or not a, not a sort of part of the house style. It was just difficult to search for. But I did find a quote from Will Shorts in searching for that, who said, and he, he was discussing his style of crossword editing as compared to the style of some other notable crossword editors from different newspapers or, or different outlets that publish crosswords. And compare, he, he was drawing a contrast between how the Times works and how certain other crosswords work. And he was saying, there are people who don't like me. They don't know modern culture. They don't read the newspaper. They don't go to movies. They don't know slang. They don't know young people. There's a lot of stuff I put in the puzzles that I think is part of being culturally literate that they don't think is part of cultural literacy. I think some people just want puzzles to stick in the period when they first did them. And I know that a lot of people already do criticize the New York Times crossword puzzle for being uh, unduly or being overly targeted at older people of a particularly constrained demographic. And I don't think that's untrue. I mean, I think that's sort of a fair observation to some extent. Um, But it's also, as someone who's been solving the New York Times crossword puzzle for, I mean, honestly, about a decade now, I think in total, not consistently, towards the beginning of that decade, I wasn't doing it every day. But, you know, I've been exposed to this thing for probably a decade now. And I can certainly say it has, it has moved with the times. I mean, it, it has it does reference things now 
that are part of the current cultural moment that it would not have referenced five years ago because those things were not part of the current cultural moment. So I do think Will Shorts does and always has made an effort to uh, to move on in that respect. And I find that can be a challenge for me because I'm getting older and I'm not necessarily updating my complete cultural context, maybe at the speed that I that I could be because you know, there are a finite number of hours in the day and we all have our, our priorities and interests. But that is, to some extent, simply part of solving the crossword. I'm sure there are crosswords that are much more up to the minute in that regard. In fact, uh, doing those boss words competition puzzles that I've been doing recently is a great example of that. Those do seem to have more current references, but the New York Times is a bit of a blend. And I would just say, stick with it. You've been doing it for a month. That's not very long, all things considered. You're already probably getting better at it rapidly, and you will do so even more rapidly going forward. And then you'll be getting a lot of things with crosses. And honestly, that's that's just how it ends up falling. I think for most solvers of the crosswords, you always have a few blind spots. Uh, but what's fun about the New York Times style crossword is it's such a densely packed grid, you do have a lot of crosses, and you can eventually get the words that way. I hope that's in some way helpful. It's probably not very helpful, but maybe at least there's a bit of perspective there. So let's move on to some clues from yesterday's uh, crossword puzzle. Some comments left on cruise, clues from yesterday's. We have, let's see here, a comment from P.A. who references the scientist uh, J.B. Goodenough whose name is somewhat astonishing and, as indicated in the, in the answer from yesterday, won a Nobel Prize. P.A. says, Good enough, whose name sounds like a joke, is ironically one of the most important material scientists to the contemporary world. Among other things, he's credited with the development of the lithium-ion battery. There are probably 50 of those in my house at minimum. And then Daniel Milak replies to say, I was surprised to see the name in the crossword. I referenced JB Goodenough in my PhD thesis recently as I used a set of rules he came up with, along with Junjiro Kanamori, which determines how certain atoms couple to each other. So that's quite interesting. I looked up this scientist before seeing these comments, and he's, I think, 99 years old and still um, actively, uh, still an active professor at his university and is still hoping to make further battery breakthroughs. Chris Lavornia says, some fonts used to be called grotesque, which originally meant belonging in a cave. This is referencing the clue and answer referring to a grotesque font that was Arial. And I said I wasn't entirely sure what the definition of a grotesque font was, even though I recognized the term and knew that Arial is one of them. So Chris continues, it was a term of derision for fonts like Arial, since their appearance was less flashy than other fonts. Those flashier fonts used to be seen as more high class. And then George Adams replies to add that the third definition of grotesque in the Merriam-Webster dictionaries is sans serif, which means a font without the little feet on the ends of the strokes. So Arial, for instance, or Helvetica, those are classic sans serif or I suppose grotesque fonts. And I looked that up and there's, there's some history around the usage of the term grotesque, but that is essentially the case. They were seen as, as um, uh, sort of... Uh, I don't know what the, what the word is, but but almost offensive in the way they looked. Perhaps maybe offensive is putting it a bit too strongly, but they were seen as aberrant, I suppose, to some to some degree. Kathy Swope says that an afghan is a knitted or crocheted, but not usually woven, throw. They're usually made of multicolored squares or other simple shapes that are joined to form tile-like repeating patterns. The name derives from the colorful, highly patterned Afghanistan textiles. So thank you, Kathy Swope. And... Uh, finally, Adam Reinardi asks, does anyone have an explanation of 500 letters cluing to STP? Yes, this is something I should have gotten because honestly, it's a bit of crossword ease, really. STP is a motor oil company that I suppose is frequently a sponsor at various motor racing events, including the Indianapolis 500, in this case, abbreviated to simply 500. So 500 letters is STP. All right, boy, that was a lot of preamble today to today's crossword. I hope it doesn't take me too long because I don't want to saddle you with uh, too much video since I give you one of these every single day. All right, this is a Saturday puzzle constructed by Caitlin Reed and Eric Agard. 
I definitely recognize these names and possibly as a pair. They might be a common constructor pair. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get started. Okay. It's said to have been born on Orange Street in Kingston, Jamaica. I wonder if this is ska, the musical genre. Um, in three letters, I don't. there aren't too many things that could fit, so I suspect that might be it. To blow it... I mean, this could be to fail spectacularly. I'm not really sure. Let's go back to the crosses here. A big to-do could be a gala or a fete. G-A-L-A or F-E-T-E. Could be either of those. A gala seems more likely. Could also be a bash, actually. Bash might be more likely because to-do is slightly slangy. And so if we're referring to a big party, maybe we want to do it in a slightly slangy way with a word like bash. So this first letter could be what? A B, an F, or a G, a big friendly giant letter. Four down. Huff. Oh, it could be to blow, as in the big bad wolf, huff and puff. Babysitter's charge. Um, I don't know. Two of the possible party words would have an A as the second letter, and the other would have an E. Babysitter's charge. So what is the responsibility of a babysitter? Not sure. Check for bugs. Too long to deal with right now. Showing uncritical enthusiasm. I don't really think I'm making a lot of progress here. And because there are so many possibilities that I've identified, I don't want to put any of them in there yet. Bright night lights. Could be stars. I mean, that might be too obvious for a Saturday. Zip. I wanted to say speed, but that's obviously too many letters. Discontinued. One prone to blowing off steam. Like some non-binary people. And state capital near Bondi Beach. That would be in Australia. Um, could be Sydney. And that doesn't confirm stars because all that confirms is that this is a... Um, a plural, and that's definitely actually Sydney because that would be New South Wales. Um, but that doesn't help with this cross. Okay. Sorry if you were offended, e.g. Um, I suppose sorry if you were offended is sort of a non-apology. Would that actually fit? Yes, it would. So maybe that's correct. But that why, that, that seems likely. Um... Can we go back to the beginning of here? Maybe a huff could be a snit. And actually, that makes a big to-do none of the things I was saying. So it might not be a party. Yeah, maybe that's not even maybe that's not even what a to-do is, although it could be, but probably not. Maybe that's more of a big do, maybe, would be a party. So a babysitter's charge could be a tot. And then a big to-do could be a stir, maybe? If you make a big to-do of something, you... I don't know. Showing uncritical enthusiasm, zip. What was this again? Catchphrase for Olivia Pope on Scandal. Oh, you know, I actually watched a bit of Scandal. I gave up on it at a certain point, but what is this? It. Boy, that was so long ago. Oh, I just can't remember at all. It's, maybe? <laughs> Check for bugs. I mean, this could be bugs as in surveillance equipment, or it could be bugs as in sort of checking hair for lice or something. To check for bugs. Royal P something. Royal Park? I mean, here in London, there are a number of royal parks, but that seems pretty vague for a U.S. crossword. I mean, it could be. People also known as the Cat Nation. Not sure. Zip. I don't know. Go go. That doesn't. That seems not right at all. Discontinued old, perhaps. Bright night lights. Neons, maybe. Discontinued. Is there something that could work there? I don't think neons is right. Have I done anything over here? People also look. Don't know what that is, I don't think. Wolf's home could be a den, right? 
Watergate. I'm just looking at these Sydney crosses. Watergate. So here's gate as in a, a trot, a, um, a gate, a sort of speed of, of walking. Um, oh, wade, maybe you wade through waters, through water. That makes sense. Regional dog variety. I'm not sure. And now I'm just I'm sort of just following the, following the trail of the crosses here. Supplying a golf bag. Don't know. Oh, woods, as in um, you've got, I don't know how golf works, but you know, you, I know that there are woods and iron clubs and they have numbers associated with them. So regional dog variety, does that help at all? Not sure. The very bottom, the floor, I suppose. We, we check these crosses. Oh, right, zip. Discontinued, I thought maybe could be old, but I'm not sure. One prone to blowing off steam. Um, not really seeing what this is. Like some non-binary people, it could be a gender, wait, no. Maybe not, sorry, that looked like it fit, but <laughs> the letters are all right, but they're in the wrong order. What is this? Wolf's home. You know, this has a question mark. So there's something punny going on. So I shouldn't have jumped straight to that. What else could this wolf be? Oh, so this could be a gender actually. So what could this be in wolf in? That feels right, but I can't really tell why. What is this regional dog variety? Oh, one prone to blowing off steam, a tornado maybe? Does a tornado have steam? Not really sure, that doesn't seem right. And then Wolf's Home, NNN, doesn't really look right either. I don't think it's that. Um, but if this were I for in, apologies if you're seeing this, I'm making quite slow progress to this puzzle, aren't I? Discontinued, some bright night lights. Boy, not, not going too well so far is this. Let's see. It happened? I have no idea if it happened is a thing that was said on Scandal, but it sort of just fits, but I don't... This doesn't look right with two A's. And I'm pretty confident about non-apology. Um... Maybe I'll move on for now. I'm not having great success in this area, am I? I could tell a tale unfold blank lightest word would harrow up thy soul, Hamlet. Uh, well, I saw a production of Hamlet mere weeks ago. It was with Ian McKellen as Hamlet, interestingly. Sort of a strange age-blind age uh, cast across the board. Um, but I don't remember this. Um... Run one's eyes over. Could be scan. Royal plan? Don't know what that would be. Peon? Like a surf or something? That seems ridiculous. I don't know. Pain? Oh, royal... Oh, maybe royal pain. A, a sort of colloquial phrase for something that really irritates you. Yeah, that could be right. Boy, this scandal catchphrase thing, there's an example of a piece of pretty specific uh, cultural literacy. That is a really specific reference. Catchphrase from scandal. Call near the end of a card game. Uno, maybe? I haven't played Uno in probably decades, but you call Uno in that, don't you? There's probably a better answer than that. Because uh, that wouldn't be near the end of the card game, right? That would be the, that would be the end. But blow it could be something up. Eighth incarnation of Vishnu. Is it Krishna? Sit on a windowsill. Still, still. Uh, sit on a windowsill, say. 
I'm not sure. What is this? Big award in French cinema. Oh, it could be the Palme d'Or. Yeah, that's how you spell that. Uh, at the Cannes Film Festival, I believe. And Steady Partner with a question mark. So there's some kind of pun. Steady Partner. Oh, I see. So it's probably Steady Partner without a question mark might suggest someone who's in a you know, long-term relationship, but with the question mark, it might suggest another word that goes with the word steady. But I don't know exactly what that is. We looked at this yet, right? Oh, right, yes. So we could try and cross with that Krishna, popular baby shower gift. I'm not sure. Pop music nickname, <laughs> as stated earlier, a bit of a weakness for me. Um, oh, although... I think I actually may have just seen yesterday. Is Rihanna referred to as Riri? Boy, wouldn't it be nice if I could just somehow get one of those out of nowhere? An usher. This could be an usher or the verb usher. Um, sit on a windowsill. Air out or air cool, as in a pie. A pie might air cool on a windowsill. To blow it could be, oh, to could be to screw up. And then a popular, popular baby shower gift could be a crib. Lifelines could be bios. In other words, lines written about one's life. Oh, I could tell a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul. That looks right. Whose. And then to usher, right, is to escort somebody. Okay, a zebra. Not sure offhand. And national fruit of the Philippines could be a mango. To say the same thing as could be to echo somebody. And no hard feelings could be, are we good? Zebra, oh, a referee perhaps? Because at least in some sports, referees wear black and white striped clothing. So that could be it. Date sacred to Jupiter, oh, the Ides, I bet. And steady partner, oh, obviously slow and steady, as in the tortoise and the hare. Squalor is filth. Showing, uncriti showing uncritical enthusiasm. Oh, rah, rah. I see. I think I misread this, perhaps, earlier. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but I think I misread this clue and it uh, wasn't helping. A big to-do. Oh, so maybe it is a stir after all. It came up earlier, but I wasn't very confident. To check for bugs. Oh, insect. Oh, it is not to check for bugs. I should be really careful about turning possible verbs into infinitives, as in to check for bugs. When I do that, it helps me It helps me get other verbs that could match this. But the problem is <laughs> sometimes words are spelled and pronounced identically in both their verb and noun form. And in this case, this is a noun, a check for bugs, something that is a check against bugs, insect, insect repellent. Okay, showy blossom in the iris family for short. Not sure, LGBTQIA follower. Oh, it could be the plus sign. And showy blossom in the iris family for short. Oh, I feel as though I know this, but I can't, I can't place it. A court infraction could be a foul on the, on a, uh, I don't know, Tennis court or something. I don't think there are fouls in tennis, but some other sporting court. To converge on could be to close in on a regional, do oh, a regional dog variety. It's a hot dog, a coney as in a coney dog from Chicago, or not Chicago, but the Chicago area. And that was discussed at great length, coney dogs on uh, maybe a month or two ago on the series. Uh, it came up in the crossword and some, some, some viewers wrote in with their experiences with Coney dogs growing up. Okay, one prone to blowing off steam. Don't really, yeah, you know, I just don't know what that is. Oh, it's catchphrase for Olivia Pope on Scandal. It's ha, it shall, looks like it's hard, I can't, Boy, there aren't very many things this could be, and yet I'm not seeing them. People also notice the Cat Nation. Oh, it could be the Erie tribe. And then Zip 
Could be move, maybe? It's, don't know. Could disc if discontinued were old. Oh, it's handled. That would make sense because I think that character on Scandal, she was sort of a, a fixer. So that would make sense. It's handled. I don't remember that being st said at all, but I'm sure it was. Zip. Um, oh, none. Zip. At, not Okay, once again, in this case, uh, not a verb, but a noun. Zip. None. Well, I guess that's not a noun. That's sort of an adjective, maybe. Bright night lights. What am I not seeing here? Do I have something wrong? Or am I just, I'm just blind, perhaps? Bright night lights. And one prone to blowing off steam. What is this? One prone to blowing off steam. I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I very much apologize if this should be screaming me in the face but I am not really seeing what this is. Um, a volcano? Oh, Wolf's Home, CNN. Right. So Wolf, oh, oh my goodness. Is that, what is it? Wolf Blitzer, an anchor on CNN? Ah, okay. That is pretty tough if you don't have that person's name available to you. I mean, to the point of, you know, to the point of the person who wrote in earlier um, at the beginning of the video, boy, that was, that gave me some real trouble. So that's, that's Volcano. And then bright nightlights are Novas, which are uh, ex exploding stars, I suppose, um, or dying stars. I think I usually think that as being Nove with an E at the end, but they're probably both valid or maybe, maybe, maybe the E form is not valid. I actually don't remember. Okay, let's see. Better part of 1999. So this is nines. The better part meaning the majority of literally the number 1999 is the digit nine, nines. Uh, okay, zing. Could be, no. I'm actually not seeing that immediately. Treats that come in plastic tubes. Ice something maybe? Corporate bigwig, okay, yeah, so that could be C, chief something officer, could be chief executive officer, but could be others as well. To fail to follow along, to get lost? Unlikely to give a strong reaction. Inert, that doesn't fit with that T we just put there. Metal workers union, oh, it could be a weld. I mean, obviously you see union and you think trade union, but that's a bit of misdirection. I think it's a weld in this case. Uning, uh, un sorry, uniting two pieces of metal, as a metal worker might. Oh, is this glad? The showy blossom in the Iris family for short. I think it might be, but I can't remember what it's short for. Someone will definitely tell me. <laughs> Street and a James Baldwin title. That's Beale Street. Beale Street could talk. Beauties. Oh, it could be bells. It's in the bell of the ball. Common Christmas tree decoration is a star. Part of UX could be user, is user, is user experience. That's what UX stands for. Uh, photographer's staff. Oh, so not staff as in assistance, but staff as in a, um, a rod to help stabilize the camera. Not a tripod, but maybe a unipod if it's a single staff. So maybe this is not get lost. Which already seemed tough because... So if this were inert, I don't know if it is, but if it were, um, treats that come in plastic tubes could be ice pops, I guess, and then fail to follow along. Don't really see what that is. Tiny carps. Oh, it could be nits. So not carps as in fish, but carps as in complaints. You're carping, you're complaining. Uh, nits as in nitpicking. And then here did some PR work on could be spun. It's a common term for doing public relations work. Not, or sorry, still going could be not done. It's not done, it's still going. This crossword is not done, it is still going. And to realize something is to see it. 
And then its anthem is Terre de No I don't Land of Our I don't know Togo though probably fail to follow along. Oh, I see. Ah, this wasn't CEO. This corporate big bigwig. It is COO, Chief Operating Officer. Why did I fill that in? Oh, right. I filled it in because I thought fail to follow along was going to be get something, which it wasn't. That was presumptuous. So right, corporate bigwig, COO, and then fail to follow along, go rogue. So then Togo. All right, we got all the, we saw all the rest of those. Erstwhile camera and satellite maker for NASA. So erstwhile meaning it once was a camera and satellite maker for NASA and is no longer. Could be RCA, which actually... Oh, no, that didn't come up in this puzzle. That came up in that boss words puzzle that I'm going to be publishing today, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, manufacturer of electric dev electrical devices. Wait, wait, don't tell me. I'm not sure. Having trouble making a call. This looks like interference, but... That wouldn't really match having trouble. You having trouble would be having interference or getting interference, and all of that seems too long. What is this? Victor Hugo's cassette, e.g. A waif, perhaps? Is that a character from Les Miserables, maybe? I don't know. Spill, I've actually never seen or read that. Uh, spill could be a fall. You take a spill, you take a fall. Opposing forces could be foes. Undesirable bedmates. Not sure. Having trouble making a call. Right. What is this? Oh, on the fence. That's clever. Yes. So not making a call with... It's funny, actually. It was only... I think it was because of this ENCE I had here that put me in the mind of interference, which then in turn put me in the mind of having trouble making a call on a cell phone. Whereas I think if I hadn't had those four letters there, I might not have immediately jumped to that sense of making a call. I might have perhaps jumped first to making a decision, which is what this one is. Um, it's a funny, that's a funny way things sometimes happen. Okay, the utmost degree could be the nth degree. No, that doesn't fit. Utmost degree. I'm not sure. Boy, I really thought that was going to be nth. Zing. Oh, nice one. Zing, nice one, you might say. After a clever quip, perhaps. Quickly... Oh, in haste. I see. That's uncalled for. And certain swinger. A hinge. A hinge. Something swings on a hinge. Uh, that's uncalled for. Oh, hey now, perhaps? That could be clued as a catchphrase from the Gary Shandling show, I think. And we could have two catchphrases from television. Oh, I think the Gary Shandling show would be uh, maybe... Too obscure and outdated for to be used here. I don't know if it is high now, but it could be. Undesirable bedmates. Yes, it probably is, because this could be a flower bed. You could have weeds in a flower bed. And utmost degree, oh, I see, a PhD, uh, a doctorate, a high degree, educational degree. And then this would be, wait, wait, don't tell me. Oh, whoops, I spelled insect repellent wrong. I'm sorry about that. Wait, wait, don't tell me is no spoilers. There we go. So there is the Saturday puzzle. I had a bit of a rough start on this one. This upper sort of northeastern quadrant over here gave me quite a bit of trouble. And then I think once I got past that, I had fairly consistent progress throughout. It didn't really fly through it, but um, didn't have any major blockers after I did get, I think, blocked for, you know, close to, I would say, maybe a third to a half of the soft time of this puzzle was sort of stuck up in this general area. I really, this Wolf's Home CNN, that was very tricky for me. And I, after I finally landed on Volcano for one prone to blowing off steam, I finally understood what was going on with Wolf Blitzer as CNN. But boy, that would be, I mean, I, I would say that would be borderline impossible if you don't have an American cultural context because it's so vague. It's a common form of misdirection in crossword cluing to sort of hide proper nouns in the first word of a clue because the style the style of clue formatting is to capitalize the first word in the clue as though it were a sentence. And of course, that means you can have a proper noun in there, someone's name or a brand name or something else, 
that is capitalized both because it's a proper noun and also because it's at the beginning, but you might not know. And I didn't know until until after I had essentially solved this through brute force that Wolf indeed was referring to a person. And it's even it's even more tricky because it's not referring to a surname, which would be the more common way to refer to a news anchor, but rather to a given name. It's just that Wolf is such an uncommon given name that it's, you know, I understand why it's considered fair to use it in a clue, whereas you wouldn't you wouldn't do the same thing for uh, a news anchor named, I don't know, Sue or something. I mean, that just wouldn't, that's not identifiable enough for an individual person. Um, anyway, yes, there we go. Uh, interesting puzzle in that I found it at, at in turn quite difficult and fairly straightforward. It was definitely both were contained. And what that probably means, because this is a Saturday puzzle, is that there were just things that I was better suited to and things I was less suited to. Um, I'd be curious to know how you fared with this puzzle, uh, whether you found it more difficult or less difficult relative to a Saturday. Obviously, it's a Saturday, so it's always going to be on the tough side. But um, yeah, I found it to be a bit all over the place in that regard. But that didn't bother me necessarily. It just gave me some trouble for a while. So do let me know. Do let me know how you fared. And because I'm going to, I'm going to move on because I had that big, long preamble at the beginning of the video. So I'm not going to do uh, an incredibly in-depth um, recap, but I would like to point out that the Patreon campaign is available if you would like to help support this channel and this series going forward. Uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you can find three tiers. Well, <laughs> One tier is is uh, an extreme tier, and I don't expect very many people to consider that, although there are some tiers available to you, and the lowest one starts at only three pounds a month, and um, convert it into your local currency, and with that, you can see all of the bonus content that has gone up to date on the uh, Patreon feed over there for backers of this channel, and I'm going to be putting up today my very, <laughs> I would say, slightly tortured solve of the Boss Words Fall Themeless Puzzle League competition. That's a lot of words. Uh, that I solved this week. It was the it was number two, puzzle number two in the competition. And boy, I really struggled. It took me, I think, 37 minutes to solve. And my, you know, the I think the puzzles are calibrated around a 20 minute uh, par time. So I, <laughs> I went way over. It was pretty tough. So, uh, be advised, you're in for a bit of a slog if you watch that one, but that is available on the Patreon campaign if you're interested. And one of the other things that is available is being personally thanked at the end of these videos in appreciation for your very generous support. And today, I would like to thank Cass, Wilkinson, Saldana, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much, Cass. Thank you, Hood Monster, for your support and for helping keep this channel going. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to join them, head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. There's a link in the description field underneath the video. With that, I do hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday puzzle, generally the longest solve of the week. It's such a big grid, not as hard as, as a Saturday though, generally. So please come back. Please, please watch then and do subscribe to the channel so you can see a notification about that when it goes up tomorrow. Um, well, until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.